a bet here. From three laps out, she started accelerating, and she's winding it up, and she will get it to adrenaline. She'll get that drive, that surge of excitement, knowing she's broken the Kenyan and into the back straight. And the crowd here are loving it in Haywood Field. They've been kept abreast of the chance of a world record over the 12 and a half laps in the glorious sunshine of this supreme venue. A lap and a half to run, still bouncing. Many coaches would say bounce is too much. A lot of vertical movement, but it matters not. She could be heading towards a world record here. A lap and a half to go. She's got separation. It's going to be very, very close indeed. I don't think the 14-minute barrier is going to go. But is she going to get that world record? Remember, the figure she's looking for, 14.05.20. Calling it early here, Tim. She's going to do it. I'm pretty sure crowd already on their feet. She is moving beautifully well. We'll be able to pick it up a little bit as well. You mentioned the 14 minutes. She's not going to be too far away from that, I don't think. She needs to run 65 for the last lap, and we could see a sub-14 minute. We are going to see a world record, though. But barring disaster, she's on the way to a world record. It was good off Segar. The world champion at 10,000 metres could be heading towards a 5,000 metres world record. She's broken the stubborn resistance of Kenya's Beatrice Chabet. Down the back straight now. I was going to say glorious isolation, but she's lapping athletes. The crowd loving it. They're on their feet here in Hayward Field. She's still grimacing. Chabet in the background can only admire this from afar as she heads into the final 200 metres. She has that superb speed endurance. Remember, she's the world record holder for 1,500 indoors. 150 to run. The crowd willing her on. What's the clock? 14.05 she needs. 100 to run. And it's going to be mighty close to 14 minutes. Can we see not only the world record broken here, but a historic barrier as well. The clock is ticking. 55, 56. It's going to be oh so close. I think she's just going to miss 14. But she smashes. She pulverizes the world record. 14.00.21 is confirmed for Guna Segai. The 26-year-old etches her name in the annals of history at this oh-so-difficult distance, the meeting ground of middle distance and long distance. And that is what it does to you. Chebet there in second place, laying on the ground, trying to recover. And Segai, well, she deserves that lift. She really does. Brilliant pace making from Sinclair Johnson and Elise Cranny, the US pairing, to set that one up. And Steve, that's not even close. And that is what he called pulverizing a world record. She's taken five seconds off that world record. Well, what a year. <laughs> We've all had watching the middle and long distances being pulled apart by these incredible athletes. Sigai won the 5,000 world title on this track last year. That was a massive day for her. And then she took the 10,000 meter title in Budapest. And don't forget, she was this very special athlete today. Yeah, fully recovered, all smiles. And that is the, uh, the banker shot, isn't it? It takes a lot, Tim. I mean, you'll know as well. You know, when you, when you, you set it up, and it, when, as soon as I saw Halon was on the start list this morning, you're thinking, okay, she knows that she's ready for this. She knows she's going to go for it because Chibet was there for a long, long time. You're running world record pace, and you've still got somebody sitting on your shoulder, a bit like we had with Inga Britton. Straight to that uh, fabulous mark, 14.00.21. Really does mark it as the performance of this uh, Diamond League finals two days so far well she's coached by on the track there absolutely delighted lives in Addis Ababa and that will make massive headlines back home guarantee you